In the following video, we will take a look at the tools that currently reside within Fast Harmony for monitoring and diagnosing a field that would be on water flood. In addition to that, we will also perform some additional analysis and try to illustrate a general workflow using the Harmony software. So what we see in front of us right now is the wells in green are, are producing or abandoned oil wells and the blue dots represent injected water wells. What we would first need to do is group the various patterns that would surround each injector. To do that, we would need to first open the Surveillance Entity Viewer. The hierarchy, by default, uh, works its way down from field, block, and pattern. Now, a field could be just a large uh, area or landmass. A block would represent reservoir within that field, and then patterns are the individual uh, patterns that we really want to create that would encompass each individual injector. We can see in this case that I've actually uh, filled out many of my blocks and renamed them accordingly and my patterns within those. Um, the only one left would be uh, the, the second pattern that I would see in my block 3, which is the block down here. I'll highlight the wells that I've added to my pattern 1. You can see the wells that are highlighted on yellow. To create uh, additional patterns, and that's the way that I did in this project, I usually just grab my lasso and I can circle my patterns on the GIS, which will then highlight the wells in my hierarchy entity viewer, and simply drag and drop those wells into my pattern. After I've created all of my patterns, the next step would be to go to our editors and the pattern allocation table. And I'll go to my field view and show all, all the allocation for my entire field. If when I created my patterns, I told Harmony that the same well showed up in multiple patterns, then I need to allocate the production uh, accordingly so that the total allocation is always equal to one or 100%. If I see a red cell, it's telling me that I need to go in here and change it uh, and allocate the production accordingly. Depending on the information that we're receiving from the field, it's possible that we would want to change the allocation percentages through time. And we can do that by adding additional uh, configurations to our pattern allocation by specifying the date that we want the change to occur. and changing the allocations accordingly. Some of the analysis and diagnostics performed at the pattern or block level require, at a minimum, the initial pressure for the reservoir and reservoir temperature to be entered. With all my patterns and blocks created, all the allocation tables filled out and properties entered, uh, the next step it might be just a good idea for us to go to the diagnostics table just to get a feel for the data and understand kind of how this project's been operating in the last, in this case, approximately 50 years. What I can see on this plot quickly is our oil production. The solid blue line is our produced water rates. The dashed blue line is our injected water rates. Maybe in this case just so we can see it a little bit better. I'll just go change the color. and our total producing gas rates. And it's probably a pretty good idea to take a look at our gas oil ratio at this point as well and see how it's been affected through time. Looking at this project quickly, I would see that from the time I started producing my um, oil. Pretty soon thereafter, my gas oil ratio started to increase quite significantly, which could also be indicative of the reservoir 
or many of the wells that we're producing, are dropping below the bubble point. Uh, very soon after we began our injection, we could see the gas oil ratio recess and then remain fairly constant. Uh, in this case, I would say that we've increased the pressure within the reservoir uh, sufficiently so that the gas returned to solution and maintain that pressure above the bubble point pressure for the remainder of the recorded information that we have here in front of us. Uh, maybe quickly just say, so far it's been a very successful water flood uh, project as far as keeping the reservoir out of pressure to maximize oil recovery. So let's go take a look at an analysis performed on one of these individual patterns. Uh, you can see that I've already uh, performed some work on this particular pattern. Uh, if I hadn't, I'd just double click on the pattern to launch it. For analysis, this is what I would see, the tools that are available to me. The tools that are available within the surveillance uh, particular module itself currently are, are performing voltage replacement ratio plots as well as hull plots on our injecting wells. So I'm going to go through what I consider a pretty helpful workflow for looking at a pattern including some of the surveillance tools as well as some of the additional tools that we have within the Harmony environment. Our first tab is simply just a diagnostic plot that I attached to the particular pattern so that just so that it shows up so I can quickly QC the data and even go create my own plots and add and remove data sets as needed just to re-familiarize myself with the data every time I should happen to open this project. Now the next tab over is our VRR time plot. So what we're displaying is our cumulative VRR, so the ratio of what we've injected to what we've produced, cumulatively through time and instantaneously for each time period. You can quickly choose to either include or exclude the production prior to the point of injection. In this case, this is our VRR total, but if I include how much I produce from the beginning of when this pattern started to produce, or I can exclude that total, and here I can quickly see that from the, if I only include how much I've injected compared to how much I've produced from the time that I started to inject, I've actually been operating pretty close and above um, this dashed line here, which is just showing uh, a 1. Exceeding 1 means that we've been injecting more than we have been producing. This voltage replacement ratio plot would be something that I would want to continue to monitor uh, through time as I continue to append new production data that I'm recording in the field. Our next tab over is our oil rate versus QM plot. Now I could go in here and just add a quick decline curve and have the software try to best fit some kind of a reasonable forecast for me. Um, for a area or a pattern that's on water flood, it often would make more sense to perform a water oil ratio analysis. And that's what I've done on this tab here. And based on my interpretation of how I would hope that the water oil ratio would project through time, based on my interpretation of this curve here, I can take this extrapolation to a forecast worksheet, add my total liquid rates, and calculate a resulting oil cut based on that water oil ratio, and actually display it on my oil rate versus cum plot. as we can see here. It's possible that other tools within uh, the Harmony environment, whether RPA or Decline Plus or Virtual, have analysis techniques or worksheets that you would want to look at, use, and help to perform additional calculations and get some uh, other results. But if this was the workflow that you want to perform uh, on a particular pattern within a water flood project, uh, then I would recommend that you could go and save this workflow by simply uh, coming into this little tab here, 
and naming the workflow accordingly. And in my case, I've already saved this workflow and named it surveillance. And then I can apply the same workflow to any one of my other patterns or all of my other patterns. And then when I go into it, I'll still have to go and do some little tweaks and some changes and change some interpretations. But to quickly show that, my tabs still show up. And then pattern two for my first block, here's my uh, VRR table. Uh, choose to include or exclude all of my pre-injection productions. My array versus Q plot which shows my interpretation of a decline curve, but here's my forecast based on my water oil ratio analysis and the other tools that I use to get there. And if I get to the point where, for example, in block one, I've done this interpretation and this analysis for each one of these patterns, I could delve roll them up and take a look at the block level uh, to get a higher level view of to what's happening in my project. Now I don't have any analysis here done. So the first thing I might want to do is add a decline curve. And at the block level, I could still perform a water all ratio analysis, but I've already done it on each individual pattern within that block. So in this case, what I'm going to do is do a forecast consolidation of those analyses, or of those forecasts. and have the software display it. So here's a consolidated forecast of those three individual patterns within my block. If I wanted to take a look at the avoided replacement ratio plot at the block level, I uh, simply add the worksheet as I just shown, click on avoided replacement ratio, and here is the information associated to it at the block level, so with all the patterns included. Uh, additional functionality that we have at the block level is that we can actually go and show the VRRs for each individual pattern within that block at the same time. Now just to save on uh, space, I'm going to remove the instantaneous VRR and quickly turn on my additional patterns. The final thing that I'd like to show in this video is the ability to create hull plots for injector wells. For a given uh, injecting well, to create a hull plot we first need to ensure that we have injecting tubing pressures, so recorded pump pressures uh, that I'm actually using to inject to perform the hull calculations. So I can see that I have my pressures entered here. If I double click on the well to launch for analysis, uh, to launch my hull plot, I simply have to click on the surveillance, go to hull, create hull plot. And you can see I already have one created here. Uh, and here's the information that we can gain out of uh, creating our hull plot. So really, a hull plot is looking at the injectivity potential for an injector well. Ideally, what we would like to see is a linear uh, trend from in between the hull coefficient and the cumulative water injected going straight through time. So in this case, this well is operating very, very well. Um, if I had a case where I could see my hull coefficient start to bend upwards, that's telling me that for the same amount of water I'm trying to inject, my pressures are increasing. So I'm having to do more work to try to push that water into my formation. If for some reason my hull coefficient starts to bend downwards, that would mean for the same amount of work, for the same amount of injecting pressure, I'm actually able to increase how much water that I'm injecting. So maybe for a case, if we have additional water that we need to dispose of, and we're wondering which wells or which injector wells could handle additional loads of liquid, I would create hull plots on all the injector wells that I have and then view which ones are operating more shallow 
and those are probably the ones that I would investigate first. So this video is a quick run through of how to use some of the analysis tools that we are we already had currently available and to show the tools that we have so far within Harmony for monitoring and performing diagnostics on water flood projects. Um, there definitely will be some expansion and some additional tools and features coming in future releases of Harmony. But for any questions about how to use any of the tools that I've displayed in this video, uh, don't hesitate to contact the cat at harmonysupport at thecat.com.